Welcome back to the Morning Blend. I cannot believe we are talking about influenza, the Yuck. flu, but we're about to hit that season, so listen up. There are a lot of things about the vaccine that I never knew before, so I'm very glad that our next guest is here. Yeah, Rebecca Michelson is the manager of community outreach at Penfield Children's Center. She is here with a few important things to note about flu season, the flu shot, and what to do if your child gets sick. Thanks for being here. Thank Good you morning. for having me. Good morning. Bringing nobody, us down here. Yeah, right? I know. I know. Not a fun <laughs> thing like, to talk about, but <laughs> nobody wants to think about it, but it's around the corner. I feel like a, a lot of my friends, especially those who are teachers, already have colds or, yep. or doctors and the kids coming in to see them. They're already getting colds. But yep. I think a, a lot of the question is what's the difference between a cold and the flu or the flu and the, what is it called? The gastrointestinal yes. flu. Yes. Because so, they're, they're all different kinds of yep, flus, right? Yep. So the cold and the flu, the biggest difference usually you're going to see is that fever yes but then for influenza that's more of that upper respiratory gastrointestinal is going to be that stomach bug that has you vomiting but they're both diarrhea. the flu so it could well, be they could be they're both called the flu but the flu vaccine only covers the influenza virus that, that upper respiratory. respiratory virus oh gotcha so yeah. you could still get sick and throw up yes <laughs> <laughs> well it's maybe not that's why a that lot one. of people think oh it yes. didn't work yep I right. didn't know that. Well, and there's a lot of reasons too why people think it doesn't work is because one, it takes two weeks for those antibodies to build up in your system. Mm -hmm. So if you're exposed to that flu virus before you get your flu vaccine or while those antibodies are building up, you still co could come down with the flu. Gotcha. Plus the vaccine doesn't always cover against all strains mm -hmm. of the flu. And so you might still get a flu virus, but it might not be as intense if you didn't have that he vaccine. Here's an, also another thing I did not know, along with how long it takes for those antibodies to build up, mm -hmm. is that kids who are six months to eight years old, so you're talking about third grade, I guess, yeah. about who have never received a flu shot in the past have to receive two doses mm -hmm. of the flu shot, and it must be given four weeks, uh, about four weeks apart. Right. At right. least four weeks apart for them to have immunity. Right, and that's basically because their immune systems are still very young and are still maturing, and so to have that time to build those antibodies to protect them, that's why they need that double dose on that first shot that they would ever get. Okay. So how are there other ways besides getting the flu shot? How are, how are we supposed to stay safe from the flu? Well, obviously hand washing is really, really important. Encouraging your family and your kids to wash their hands often. Um, they say to scrub your hands for 20 seconds. So that's about as long as it takes to hum or sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Yep. It's kind of how to remember birthday. that. Yep. Yep. Or the happy birthday song. Um, the other thing is teaching children when they're young how to properly cover their mouth and their nose when they sneeze and they cough. We want to make sure that it's covered fully, that we're coughing into the elbow of our arm mm -hmm. um, so that we're not spreading germs as we're grabbing doorknobs and things like that as well. And Does that make you cringe when you see someone in public <laughs> sneeze into their hand? Yeah. Like, no, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah. So do that and then go, hey, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, my son the other day saw someone coughing. He says, oh, you don't cough in your hand. You got to do it in your elbow. <laughs> yeah. I yep. think it's a little bit more well known now that it you is. should cover your It is. I mean, I think it's hands. for kids, sometimes they still kind of go for the hand first because yeah. it's closer, but yeah. once they kind of learn that skill, it, it's built in for them. And the other important piece is if you're not feeling well or your child's not feeling well, stay home. Yeah. You know, don't risk Tough. getting other folks sick. And I think it's also important to remember with the influenza virus is don't just think, oh, it's just allergies or, oh, it's just a cold. Because a lot of times we do say that determining factor is mm -hmm. that fever, but you can still be diagnosed with influenza and not have that fever. So don't mm -hmm. blow it off as saying, oh, I think it's just a cold. If you really think it's something more than that, stay home, protect others, see your doctor. Yeah. So when do you know if it's time to go to the doctor? Because I think that's the question a lot of people have or they teeter sure. on. Sure. Mm -hmm. So for kids, what we want to talk about is if there's fevers, if there's chills, if anything is just not what you would kind of normally expect with a cold virus, then I would say that would be the time that you go see the doctor. Okay. Um, if you are having difficulty breathing, if their alertness is decreased, then we want to start talking about urgent care and emergency room. Go mm -hmm. quicker. Mm -hmm. And I like these last two on here, and I just wanted to say something real quick because a decrease in alertness, so they seem sort of lethargic, or it could be they can't calm down or right. uncontrollable crying. And kids are different, and I think it depends on how far progressed it is, right. that, that illness. But don't wait. I remember when my youngest daughter was 
about six months, we were at the doctor at four and things were fine, keep her elevated, mm -hmm. do the breathing mm -hmm. machine, she's okay. Mm -hmm. By midnight, she went to the hospital and was admitted and mm -hmm. was in for quite a while and had to have her lungs pumped and things like that. Yep. She had pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So it can progress very quickly. Yep. Yeah. Trust yep. your intuition, because exactly. I kind of just shot up in bed, she wasn't even crying, I'm like, Something's not right. Yep. I just, we got to yep. go. Yep. And I would say trust your intuition. And that's that. always my rule too, is trust mm -hmm. your gut. You know what your child's, you know, attitude is. You know what's normal for them, what's not normal for them. So you know when something's off. And even if you're like, well, I'm not sure, it's okay. That's why the doctor is on call and you yeah. can call and you can say, hey, what do you think? And if they're like, no, go to the emergency net room now. Do they it. like to wake up in yes. the middle of the night. <laughs> That's, your call. That's why they're on call. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Especially if it's your first child and you're always freaking out. <laughs> but if you would like to know how to keep your family safe and healthy, just go to PenfieldBuildingBlocks.org. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thank that was you. Great information. Yeah, that was really good. Perfectly timed yes. too. Yes. Thank you so much.